Yo, what's up guys? In this video, we are looking at how to color grade Sony's S-Log3 specifically in the newer lineup like the A7S3, A7 IV and FX3 because the color in these fairly new releases is different from the older cameras. Some of the more prominent improvements are to the skin tone and to the hue of the blues and I would know coming from the A7 III to the FX3. So this video is a follow-up to my previous video on exposing S-Log3 if you haven't watched that yet, I recommend you pause this video and go watch that first. Because here I'm going to show you how to color grade S-Log3 fast and easy if you expose it correctly. Let's go. Alright guys, so right now I have my clip here loaded up in the color tab. And if you want to download this test footage and play around with it for yourself, you can do so with the link in the description. Alright, so I chose this clip for this tutorial because it shows the skin tone and a bit of uh, shadows here and also highlights in his white shirts and stuff like that so i want to show you what is the easiest and fastest way to grade s log tree when there is uh, variables like uh, shadows highlights and also skin tone in the shot so today we are dealing with only three notes i'll keep it as simple as possible the first note will be our primaries and the second note will be a bit of our look. I just want to do a very quick look. And the third one is the most important thing, which is our color space transform, which I will shorten as CST. So a color space transform is what we will use to get the picture or the video from a S-Log3 color space into a Rec. 709 color space, which is a display color space, and it's the color space that you want to deliver in. So I will talk a bit about why we we are working upstream of the CST later. So right now, let's go into a CST and let's go into our effects, and we can drag in our color space transform effect into the CST. So you need to know what camera and picture profile that you're shooting on. In this case, our color space will be Sony S Gamma 3 Cine. So this is the color space that the camera captured in. And then the Gamma is Sony S Log 3. And then we are outputting into Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. So Gamma 2.2 is for web output and 2.4 is for broadcast and 2.6 is for cinema. But for safety, usually we'll just go with the middle point, which is Gamma 2.4. So once I click that, you can see that the picture is coming to a pretty good start. This is like color corrected. And that's what we're trying to achieve when we are using color space transform. There are other settings like tone mapping, and usually you can just leave it at Da Vinci. But sometimes we also will try luminance mapping, which kind of suppresses the luminance of the yellows and the orange that's what i found out but i'll leave it at da vinci at this point and there's also gamut mapping which you can do a saturation compression which will keep the saturation at some parts of the clip but to keep it simple today i'll just leave it at none and for these settings it, you can just apply it as follow you don't have to touch it at all so right now we have our cst transforming the s gamut 3 cine color space into a rec 709 display color space and i also want to talk a bit about why we use a cst instead of just like going in the primaries and doing adjustments or adding saturation and things like that to get sort of to the right space well that's because when we are doing manual adjustments we are just trying to guess what the camera saw instead of using the proper workflow of convert what the camera saw in s gamma 3 cine into a display color space which is rec 709 while maintaining all the data in the shadows and the highlights so that's why we want to accurately do that with a color space transform. And in the case that your footage is not from Sony S-Log3, there are other color space and input gammas like Blackmagic, RE, DJI, there's a Dragon, Panasonic V gamut, there's also, yeah. So that's a lot of built-in color space that DaVinci Resolve has included in their color space transform. So it's super easy to use and super fast. And another question that you might be asking is, why not just use a LUT for this? Does it have the same effect? And I would say it almost has the same effect. It's just that you can manually change stuff 
like if you're purposely delivering for web you can use gamma 2.2 see there's a shift and then if you're delivering for cinema you can use gamma 2.6 so if you're just using a LUT if you're just slapping on a LUT you can't do the manual adjustments like this all right so let's go back let's turn this off and right now as you can see let's check our waveform so from our waveform we can see that the blacks are not clipping the shadows are not touching and also the highlight the details in the highlight is maintaining in a good position let's also turn on our skin tone indicator and we can see that his skin is yeah is sitting on the skin tone indicator line so that's a very good start if you are trying to color grade and this is also because i exposed slog tree properly like in my previous tutorial and also the white balance is set to daylight so that I don't have any weird white balance happening in this clip. Let's reset that and although it's set the white balance set perfectly but I just want to do like tiny adjustments. I'm feeling that it's a bit green so I'll just add a bit of tint and the temperature looks fine to me. So basically for correction that's all I did. I just added a bit of tint then I'm pretty good to start because this is only for correction is not to build a look and for our look i'll just quickly very quickly go pull my lift towards the greens a bit and then the gamma i'll pull it up to match the skin tone and then again i'll pull towards the yellowish a bit okay maybe the greens come back so i won't show you much on what i'm doing in the look because the look is not what we're focusing on today so i'm pretty happy with this look but i'll just push my lift a bit more to crush the shadows and then I also lift up my gain. So this is more or less the finished grade in just three notes and I barely did anything in the correction. So I want to talk a bit about why we are working upstream from the CST note. So the main reason is because we want to work in the color space which is widest which is before we transform it to a REC 709 color space. So once it goes into the REC 709 color space, it actually compresses. So you can imagine it being smaller. So when we stretch it out again, the clip won't look as good as if you did it upstream. So let me do a quick demo. So I'll put a bit more adjustment to this clip first. I'll just crush the shadows a bit more so that it's more obvious and you can see. And I also push the highlights more. Okay, so I'll copy it, Control C, and then I'll put a note behind the CST, and then I'll paste it. So let's compare the both. I'll grab a still. So right now on the left is what we are working with, which is upstream, the CST note, and on the right is downstream, the CST note. So as you can see, upstream, there's a lot of details in the shadows with the same setting. I just copy and paste it over. There's still a lot of details in the shadows. But once I switch it to downstream, then it's a more drastic change because we are making the adjustments on a REC 709 color space instead of what the camera saw, which is the S Gamma 3 Cine color space. So it's always good to be working in the larger color space so that we can retain more data in the shadows and the highlight. Even the adjustment to the color, you can see a bit of difference. I just prefer to work upstream so that I can retain more data in the picture. So you can see that the same setting has a very big difference depending on where you put it in the node tree. So you might be wondering in this case, is the color space transform node always at the last well not necessarily it's depending on your intention there are some things that go downstream from the cst node for example like glow or noise reduction or film grain depending on the intention on how you want the final grade to be there are some effects or some adjustments that you can do downstream but all in all there's no right or wrong it just depends on your own workflow so to recap for today's grade let's turn everything off so we first started with the CST node from the S Camo 3 Cine color space into a Rec 709 color space. And then I did a bit of primary adjustments in the tin to bring it back to normal. And then I added a look, which I pull up the gain, pull down the leaf, and also added a bit of green into the leaf and a bit of orange in the gamma. So that's our look for today done in only three notes.
So I hope you like the final outcome. Of course, it's not gonna look super stylized, but it's gonna be sufficient if you do corporate stuff, weddings and things like that. If you want something fast and stylized, maybe try using my LUTs, which I have linked down in the description. I really hope this tutorial gives you more confidence to use SLOG3 for your videos. So give me the thumbs if it did, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey there, if you like the music and sound design in this video, it's all thanks to Artlist. With Artlist, you have access to a library of highly curated, royalty-free music and sound effects. I find it easy to use Artlist for my videos because it has different category filters for my search. And you get all this for $10 a month if you subscribe annually. And if you want two months of free subscription on Artlist, use the link in my description to sign up. And best of all, you'll be supporting my channel so that I can put out more free content for you guys. Sign up now and start creating without limits.